keeping it. Mike Semper VV here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in iHeart American Forces Radio, SportsByline.com, all of our over the air affiliates, replays on Sirius XM, or maybe your video streaming on Twitch or YouTube. And I will stop to say. If you are streaming on YouTube right now, we are working on whatever problem is ailing the feed, so we will have that up as soon as possible. But however you're joining us today, I'd just like to say thank you. Hopefully wherever you are, it's sunny outside. If not, hopefully it's sunny inside your mind. It is Memorial Day weekend here in the United States of America, so a special salute to all of our service members across the world, especially those of you listening on American Forces Radio. No Brian today because it's Friday, and he's in Las Vegas for this weekend's F4W Online Wrestling Observer Convention. And no Filthy today either as he's leaving Las Vegas, and I'll fill you in on that a little bit later on. So joining me today will be Calgary's own Lance Storm. And we're going to have a lot to get into today. want to start by wishing the best to... Jim Ross, who on Thursday posted on X that he had been admitted to the emergency room in Norman, Oklahoma, after suffering from shortness of breath. The 72-year-old AEW commentator posted an update later in the day uh, where he posted a photo taken with his daughters at the hospital. Dave Meltzer reports that Ross is dealing with the flu, raised heart enzymes, and breathing issues. He is uh, not able to be in Las Vegas for this weekend's double or nothing, but he expects to be fine within a few days. As everybody knows, JR has suffered from multiple health problems in recent years, including fighting skin cancer. And he recently revealed in an interview with Sports Illustrated that he underwent surgery to replace his right hip. But he has been feeling better than any point in the past year or so. Hopefully, all the best to JR. He'll be back soon. Ross was at the commentary desk last time around for AEW's Dynasty pay-per-view. And as I mentioned, we got double or nothing to get into. But before we get to that, we got WWE King and Queen of the Ring and a whole lot more. When we get back from break, we'll get into it all. Wrestling Observer Live. Welcome back to the show. Mike Semper Vivi here with you. Wrestling Observer Live. You know, we do this show right here for an hour at a time every single day. But if you want us 24-7, you can try to find me on Twitter slash X. I'm at Semper Vivi. The website is at W-O-N-F-4-W. And the broadcaster is at Sports Byline USA. Jim Valley is here with you live on Saturdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific. And Andrew Zarian is here live with you on Sundays starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, You know, the Figure Four Online Wrestling Observer Convention is taking place this weekend. And if you're in town in Las Vegas, all of the information that you need to know is available through the front page of the website or by heading on over to f4wonline.com slash Vegas. We are trying to work on right now uh, a series of issues, including Lance Storm and uh, a connection issue that we're having between Sports Byline right now and Lance, but we're trying to figure that all out and hopefully... By the next segment, Lance will be joining me here to talk about what is going on this weekend. I did mention that Filthy Tom Lawler is going to be late to the festivities in Las Vegas. That is because he is in Cleveland, Ohio tonight working for AIW. AIW's Gauntlet for the Gold 17 streams live on Triller TV tonight. If you needed some alternate programming from WWE and AEW and This is typically a spoiler-free show, but I am going to have to mention two specific things that happened on SmackDown, which has just wrapped up taping, I guess you could say, uh, for broadcast later on tonight on Fox. Uh, The two results from the King and the Queen of the Ring tournaments. There is a bunch of other storyline movement that took place during the show i won't spoil any of that but when we talk about king and queen of the ring and what our predictions are going to be i'll i'm gonna have to spoil you i'm sorry put your fingers in your ears turn the dial down for a little bit do whatever you have to do but you're gonna be spoiled so there you go 
Uh, Bradley Hope, who is the co-author of Blood and Oil, uh, Mohammed bin Salman's Ruthless Quest for Global Power, joined John Pollock and Brandon Thurston's show yesterday to talk about Saudi Arabia's growing influence on global sports and sporting events. And they talked about a lot of different aspects, including the country's demographics, contrasts in the country's social and political shifts that have been going on over the last several years, the monarchy itself and MBS's rise, and the concept of sports washing, which is something that Hope actually pushed back against a little bit, and he explains a little bit as to why in that interview. And they also noted uh, Turkey al who is the chairman of the General Entertainment Authority. That's the man's face that you see at many events, either doing the talking during press events or in photo ops with Triple H or whoever it will be. Um, but it was a reminder that this event, no matter how big WWE is right now and how much the negativity and the shadow of Jamal Khashoggi's murder you know, that happened in October of 2018, and then it was a month later when WWE ran Crown Jewel for the first time. And I think we're still probably a really, really long way off before those two events are kind of out of everybody's minds. And it is going to be pushed by sports, surely, because, again, it's a very... And it's going to be pushed by big business, obviously, too, with people investing in Saudi Arabia and Saudi Arabia investing in the United States and in, in other ventures. But sports is obviously the one that is most important to this show. And obviously, WWE is not pure sport. But with that said, we have seen, as I've talked about, Saudi Arabia having an influence in promotional events and boxing events here in the United States and in other parts of the world. And that show that, again, that Bradley did uh, joining John and Brandon was just a real reminder that no matter, you know, it's going to be a long time before those two events to me in my mind, and I think in a lot of other people's minds, are not tied together. But with that out of the way... They are running events in Saudi Arabia. Obviously, the Jeddah Superdome, that is where WWE Friday Night SmackDown uh, tonight is going to take place. And then, of course, King and Queen of the Ring tomorrow. Uh, scheduled matches for tonight without spoilers. The Street Profits against the Bloodline, Solo Sokoa and Tonga Loa with Paul Heyman in their corner. In a non-title match, WWE Women's Champion Bailey will face Chelsea Green with Piper Niven at her side. But now it is time to spoil you because I have the results of the King and Queen of the Ring semifinals as it relates to SmackDown. And Nia Jax has defeated, defeated Bianca Belair to move on to face Lyra Valkyria on Saturday. And on the men's side of things, as Brian Alvarez had predicted, Randy Orton knocked off Tamatanga and will move on to face Gunther on Sunday. Gunther was in the crowd watching Randy get his victory. So, as I mentioned earlier on, hopefully Lance can join me in the next segment and we'll start getting into some of our predictions and some of our thoughts coming up on that show. <clears throat> Pardon me. The Calgary Sun is reporting that the winners of the 2024 Men's and Women's Owen Hart Foundation tournaments will be crowned when AEW returns to the Scotiabank Saddle Dome in Calgary, Alberta, on Wednesday, July 10th. There is going to be a live Dynamite episode that night, along with the taping of Collision. That show is taking place during the Calgary Stampede Rodeo Festival. Dr. Martha Hart will be at the show to present the tournament winners with the Owen Hart Cup. Further details, including the participants for the tournament and when they will begin, have not been announced as of yet. To honor Owen Hart's legacy, AEW and the Owen Hart Foundation entered into a partnership in 2021. The Owen Hart Foundation tournaments have taken place annually since 2022. Adam Cole, Britt Baker, Ricky Starks, and Willow Nightingale have won the tournaments since they were introduced. And it is a sad anniversary uh, this past week as yesterday marked the 25th anniversary of Owen Hart's death. 
at WWF Over the Edge 1999. Uh, as the Blue Blazer, everybody knows about that story. Martha Hart told the Calgary Sun in the article that the month of May, which also includes Owen's birthday, reminds her of all that she has lost. So uh, just, a, again, a if you... It's still hard 25 years later to wrap your brain around. We had usually a lot of, at that time, I was going out a lot. Uh, I had, you know, five years out of high school, you know, having a good time, working, all that sort of stuff. So the need to be there on Sunday to watch a pay-per-view was kind of gone. Like you're trying to hook up and trying to have fun and all that sort of stuff. And you know, I still love wrestling and everything, but, like, I had other stuff to worry about, so didn't watch the show. And then got home and was hanging out for a little bit and got a call from a friend saying what had happened. And it was like, you got to be kidding me. I turned on the 11 o'clock news and locally, I can't remember if it was, I think it was a Baltimore station. It was either Baltimore or Washington station. I think it was Baltimore. Yeah, it was Channel 11 in Baltimore. And that's what they let off the news with, with this stunt that had gotten wrong and they actually replayed the pay-per-view that night and then ended up replaying it, I believe, a couple days later in its normal Tuesday replay time slot because that's how it used to go back in the day. You used to have a Sunday, and then they would kind of hype what you missed on Monday. And, oh, if you missed it, watch it on Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever it was. And they, they went ahead and apparently re-aired it and then... Obviously, never, never did again up until the time the WWE Network started. And then there was a whole lot of controversy over whether that event should be on there or not. But obviously it is. And again, a, a very sad situation. And hopefully we can get our situation with all the audio and video fix when we get back. Wrestling Observer Live. The show, Mike Sempervivi here with you. And only Mike Sempervivi here with you. Our issues with Lance Storm have caused Lance to just throw his hands up and say, I'm done with this. I'm not going to be on this show today. And I understand. Sorry about that, everybody. Everybody that was looking to uh, run to your gaming app and try to put in some parlays on the king and queen of the ring with what Lance would suggest. Just going to have to listen to me now and try to take my word for it. Uh, you know what Brian Alvarez has thought about the whole thing. He thinks it's uh, been coming down to Gunther and Randy Orton so we can have a Randy Orton-Cody Rhodes title match and feud and series start taking place. And not that I was against that, and, and, and I just it's hard for me to picture Cody not mixed up with the bloodline. And I know that Randy could kind of be still mixed up with both. And and not, but we'll see. We'll see how everything goes and shakes out with this. I still wouldn't be surprised if Gunther gets the victory. I mean, you're trying to push him. That would be the only reason to give Lyra Valkyria the win over Nia Jax. Although, eh, I, I don't know what the odds are for this. But if you're going to try to kick off Lyra and you've put her with Becky... And she's going to be facing off against Liv. And there's a possibility that Liv could beat Becky for that title. And you could do Liv and Lyra. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm, I'm thinking that that's going to happen uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, a little bit too much. But we'll see what goes on. Um, when it gets to the entire card, it's not a big one. It's not going to be a long show. Probably going to be a tight three-hour show. Undisputed. Universal Champion Cody Rhodes against Logan Paul. Yeah, there is no shot that Logan Paul is winning. The only shot that Logan Paul wins is if Jake Paul runs in and knocks out Cody Rhodes with a pair of brass knuckles and Logan covers him and gets the victory. But then out comes Mike Tyson and he says, okay, fine, you know, this sucks that this happened, but I'm here to protect Cody, and you know what, on July 20th, I'll fight you for that title back. And that doesn't make any sense at all, but you know what, that would be the only thing I could come up with as to why or how Cody Rhodes could possibly lose to Logan Paul uh, coming up on Saturday. The match is probably going to be really fun. You know how athletic Logan Paul is, and Cody Rhodes, if nothing else, is going to have a good match. 
even if it's not spectacular. But I think in this case with Logan Paul, it's got the ability to be spectacular at times. Put your money on Cody Rhodes. Intercontinental title triple threat match. Sami Zayn, Bronson Reed, Chad Gable. I know I'll probably piss a lot of people off with this, but Bronson Reed. I would love to see Bronson Reed come out of this with the Intercontinental title. You can still have Sami Zayn and Chad Gable going after the belt. You can still have them in the mix, but that would be something else. Now, the thing about that is it's Saudi Arabia. And because it's Saudi Arabia, I can't see Sami Zayn taking an L in this match. You know, especially, again, if you're doing it in a way where Chad Gable, you know, he hits a move on Gable and then Bronson Reed turns around and, you know, steals the pin or something like that. But at some point, again, maybe I'm trying to rush things along too much sooner rather than later, but I would love to see Bronson Reed kind of belt it up and kind of see him in a position to see if he can carry that position and see if, you know, again, with what they do with some of these titles, it's kind of seeing if you can sink or swim. And obviously, Paul Levesque has been a big fan of Bronson Reed. When Vince McMahon cut Bronson, Triple H called him back, you know, and they have treated him very seriously. He gets a star entrance. He's been out there bullying people without too much pushback in his face. So at some point, you know, like Gunther, you know, it was like, I think a lot of us knew that Gunther, if treated properly, was going to be able to run with any ball that they handed him. And they, he did. He did for 666 days as Intercontinental Champion and did so before that and continues to do so after that. I'd like to see Bronson Reed kind of get that opportunity too and try to fend off opponents and see if he can be a, an actual like star, at least on the level of... Uh, being taken seriously by fans as a Kevin Owens or a, a Seth Rollins, a, you know, Gunther, Randy Orton, somebody at that level. So at the end of the day, long story short, I think Sami Zayn does get the victory. Women's world title match, Becky Lynch and Liv Morgan. I can absolutely see Liv Morgan winning the title. The problem is Becky Lynch. Do you want to take the title off of her now? And I think there are a lot of people that are looking at the landscape and going, eh, you know, at come clash at the castle, you know, that big women's match that's going to be on that show is probably going to be Bailey defending her title against someone, whether it be Nia Jax, maybe it's somebody a little more local, like a Piper Niven or somebody like that who, you know, then maybe that could work. You know, to me... You, you can go ahead and pull that trigger now. Not that I, I'm, again, maybe I'm rushing into Lyra challenging Liv, but I think this would be a good idea. It will give Liv Morgan a chance to try to, to get Lyra Valkyria over. And I, that would go miles, I think, for Liv Morgan and her reputation in the ring as a wrestler. If she can really take somebody who's brand new, who is to a lot of people very vanilla and take her and be able to bring her up with her as a, at a point where she's trying to, to get over and at a, without Becky Lynch around. And that's going to be another important thing too. If Liv does win that belt and we do have Lyra, Becky cannot be there at Lyra's side the entire time. You're going to have to see if Lyra can do something here and get herself over with, with Liv Morgan. So I think if, because where else is a title going to change on this show? I just thought, you know, mention Sami Zayn in Saudi Arabia and Cody Rhodes against Logan Paul. Those titles aren't changing. If you wanted to flip a title, this would be the one to do it with. That brings us to the tournament matches, Queen of the Ring final, Lyra against Nia Jax. And again, unless you're trying to get Lyra Valkyria over real hard real fast real strong and as a real threat to Liv Morgan and everybody else on the Raw roster she goes over if not makes sense that Nia Jax goes over she can be even more incorrigible out there when she's bragging about being your queen because you all love her so much I mean she was kind of doing the thing Chris Jericho's doing now a long time ago you know and playing into all of the trolling that she gets and giving it right back to everybody else. So Nia Jax, I think, gets the victory there. And with Gunther and Randy Orton, I, I to me, you can do Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton 
easily without having Randy Orton win this match. You can have something with the bloodline. You can just have Nick Aldis make a decision that, you know, Randy Orton made it to the semifinals. He was our, our top guy on SmackDown. He took it the furthest. And yeah, he didn't win against Gunther, but he deserves something for that. He needs a shot at, at, at Cody Rhodes. He, you, know, you can build him in any other sort of way without having him go over Gunther. And it's not like Gunther takes a lot of losses, and it's Randy Orton and Gunther. I mean, like, honestly, you know, like, the match is going to be terribly worked or something like that. I mean, I don't think anybody is going to lose a whole lot with a loss. But with that said... Let's give Gunther the victory here. Let him be King Gunther. It's not like you actually have to, you know, go in a King Booker direction and he has to, like, you know, go back into Prussian war history or something like that or Austro-Hungarian war history and become a Kaiser or something like that. Just go ahead and just have him be Gunther. And he happened to win the King of the Ring. And guess what? Now he's moving on to go kill somebody and go maybe, I don't know, you know, go after Damian Priest title. And I would love to see that with everything going on with Drew McIntyre, with all the other people out there. I would love to see Gunther and Damian Priest just because I know it's going to be two grown men in there beating the hell out of each other. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to Gunther in the title picture. And that pretty much wraps up everything that's going to be taking place tomorrow in the Jetta Superdome for King and Queen of the Ring. I'm sure they're going to add some pre-show matches. I'm sure there's going to be something, but they have not advertised everything yet. For those of you who happen to tune in late, I will remind you, even though I just probably spoiled you, that uh, there are, are spoilers because, well... The show's already wrapped up and over with. As I mentioned, I didn't get into any of the storyline aspects uh, that are moving forward on the show, but there was a lot of that. There is L.A. Night. There's just a whole bunch of stuff that has taken place on the show. So there you go. That's what you got to look forward to tonight on Fox. Before we get to AEW Double or Nothing on Saturday, or excuse me, on Sunday, we have two shows one on Saturday, of course, Collision live on TBS. And then tonight, AEW Rampage on TNT with matches that were taped on Wednesday after Dynamite at the Mechanics Bank Arena in Bakersfield, California. No spoilers here, but you go ahead and pick the victor between Samoa Joe and Dom Kubrick. Samoa Joe against Dom Kubrick. Roosh will face off against Isaiah Cassidy and I'm, what I'm sure is going to be an entertaining beating. Isaiah Cassidy is great. He's got a great personality. He is great getting thrown around. And Roosh is just, uh, God, I love watching him. You want something dangerous on your show? Put Roosh out there. You have complete unpredictability on what he's going to do. So I am happy he is going to be on this show, and I'm going to watch it because he is on this show to see what he does to Isaiah Cassidy. Pack will wrestle Rocky Romero in what I'm sure is the best match of the evening. And also Chris Statlander will team up with Willow Nightingale, the TBS champion, a couple days before she's scheduled to defend her title against Mercedes Monet. They will team up to face the team of Alex Windsor and Anna Jay. We'll talk about AEW Double or Nothing and some other news from around the world when we get back. Wrestling Observer Live. Back to the show, Mike Sempervivi here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. Thank God we do this show for an hour every single day because there's always a tomorrow to try to get this thing right and i apologize for everybody out there who's had to deal with any of the uh, tech issues that we've had on our end of things here on the show but big boss man brian alvarez will be back with you on tuesday i believe he will be on here with me on tuesday no show on monday unless something changes and we will alert you via social media if that's the case but no show on monday you're gonna have to be a subscriber to f4wonline.com not just to go to the convention because you don't have to be a subscriber to go to the convention you would just appreciate it more no nope, nope. You could sign up $9.99, F4, no, $11.99. I can't even remember what the price is right now. That's how long ago it's been. $9.99, that's been stuck in my head forever. I blame the WWE Network for that. I don't know what it is, like $12.99, whatever it is, it's worth it to become a member at F4WOnline.com and listen to Wrestling Observer Radio. There will be a new one of those shows 
after AEW Double or Nothing, and who knows what Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez will fight about, but that is when Brian is going to be back on these airwaves. Of course, he's in Las Vegas with Vinny. There's going to be a show that will not be uh, taped. Uh, I don't know if they're claiming phones or not, uh, but there's going to be no audio or video proof that this show ever existed. It's going to be like the old the old Shriners uh, roasts or whatever they were called, uh, the Shriners Club, where they just they would have roasts and you'd never hear anything about them, and they were the funniest, dirtiest, nastiest things in the world. Now you got to be a so you got to. Buy a ticket through F4WOnline.com. As I mentioned, slash Vegas, go to the front page, find out what that show's all about. I think I filled enough time here to begin this segment, uh, getting into things. AEW Collision, TBS, tomorrow night, MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. Same building that they are running double or nothing in on Sunday. The only things that I saw right before the show that have been announced for Saturday night are the Lucha Brothers of Pentel Zero Miedo and the returning Ray Phoenix against Austin and Colton Gunn. I would just like to take this time to apologize for everybody out there, uh, for me hyping up Jay White coming over to the United States. I still think Jay White is a superior in-ring performer. He does a lot of things really, really well. But I thought with enough time... When it got down to a two-minute, 20-second promo that he'd be able to hammer it and be able to really take things to a different level, I don't believe that has happened. I think in small doses, Austin and Colton Gunn carry those promos, and that's a real surprise for me, and it really hurts my feelings as somebody that thought Jay White came across better in promos than Will Ospreay in, in New Japan, that it's not even close will osprey if you give him two and a half three minutes is going to blow away the field it's one of the reasons that he has gotten over as big as he has yes the crowd popped for him big when he showed up for the first time and he was in that green track suit and all that but it was him commandeering the microphone and taking that thing over and taking command of it and rolling with it that has made him you know, sustain, I think. And obviously his in-ring work is what it is, but the fact he's getting his personality over, and that's something that Jay White, I just don't think has found his footing on yet. So, mea culpa out of me, I was wrong about Jay White, at least so far with how that man has been portrayed in that company, and it hasn't been very well. It's like everybody else there. All the stop and starts with Wardlow. Basically, you know, you know, that's the greatest example when Brian complains about guys being in the same position. Wardlow being used by MJF, you know, and then we're going to build him up. And then now he's just being used by Adam Cole. And it's ah, it's a frustrating thing. But uh, anyway, we'll move on. Six-man tag team match also tomorrow. Jay Lethal, Jeff Jarrett, and Satnam Singh against Brian Danielson and FDR. That should be very entertaining. <laughs> Can you take Sotnam Singh out of that mix? You have five really, really good, if not great, uh, if not magnificent, still at times professional wrestlers. I love Jeff Jarrett's act. I've always been a Jeff Jarrett fan for a long time. So to see him continue on and continue to get under people's skin, you know, I same thing with and you know it's same thing with Jay Lethal too because Jay Lethal also seems to have that effect on people. And I've always been a big Jay Lethal fan. So that group together doing what they do in in basically more of a comedic you know role i'm all for it brian danielson and ftr they're fantastic you just hope no one gets hurt darby allen put him in a, a bubble if he can for the next you know 48 hours if it's up to brian definitely put brian danielson in that same bubble alvarez is always afraid that danielson's going to kill himself doing something but Hopefully everybody is safe and healthy and ready to go come Sunday night at the MGM. Anarchy in the arena. Damnedest thing. And other people have pointed this out. I was going to talk about it or bring it up yesterday on the show, but Alvarez obviously had a lot to get off his chest yesterday. But Anarchy in the arena, Brian Danielson, FTR, and Darby Allen against the Young Bucks. Jack Perry and Kazuchika Okada. What are these men fighting for, exactly? 
what are the stakes here? It, it, they didn't attach it's a battle of pride or something like that. I mean, in the storyline, if you watch AEW and you've seen all the promos from Adam Copeland and from FTR and from Brian Danielson and from Swerve Strickland, you know, there's obviously, you know, a feeling there where, damn, you know, we're all about AEW. It's given us this opportunity. We love working here. It's the best place in the world. If I'm Adam Copeland, I'm thinking differently on that because you've been beaten up a lot in that locker room that claims to love you so much. Uh, nobody came out and helped you as they were taking your wife's wedding ring, uh, the, your wedding ring your wife gave you, off your finger. So I, I'd be a little more upset about that. But I guess he's going to get out all of his frustrations in that barbed wire match. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on as well, too. But other than, like, what are the stakes? It's not actually really been determined, you know, other than it's just going to be a wacky brawl fight where there's going to be some incredible spots there's probably going to be some things pre-taped that are, are, are you know some sight gags some things like that and i'm perfect with it you know these matches anarchy in the arena it's not like you could judge it against you know classic wrestling matches it is what it is it's one of the reasons i like bray white and john cena so much is if you're going to just give me something out of left field, if you're going to give me something wild or crazy or whatever it is, make it good. Make it entertaining. Make it special. Make it happen. And hopefully they go ahead and do that in this match. But at the end of the day, if it is Danielson, FTR, and Darby that win, what do you win? You just win more ire from the executive vice presidents, right? From this heel unit, correct? And if the heel unit wins, well, okay, now what do you do? You go ahead and you continue to choke out and stamp down and cleanse the locker room? I mean, the owner showed up with a guy with a flamethrower. So, like, if he can, like, get a flamethrower for one of the guys on the roster to kill the, threaten the EVPs with, I mean, can't he just, like, take them out of power? I know these are, like, really dumb things for me to say i'm sure people are just like wanting me to shut up about it but like it if you think about it like what what is where are we going here with this what is this story about but also isolated and in a bubble this match is probably going to be really fun it is going to be really crazy it is going to be really ridiculous and i do have expectations as far as the ridiculousness scale that uh you know it's it's a high bar here let's see if you can clear it we'll see what they do Swerve Strickland, the AEW World Heavyweight Champion, facing off against Christian Cage. There's not a shot. There's not a shot. Christian wins. I love Christian Cage. I almost, I understand this being the first feud for Swerve Strickland because it's a guy that he can beat in Christian. He's a guy with a posse that he can beat up. He still had, you knew he had to shake off uh the the rest of the embassy or whatever the the mogul embassy like you knew all that had to happen so i was okay with this but it's how swerve strickland has been presented and they've done some things well as far as giving him some video packages and some things like that but you know ever since he won the title there have been some missteps there and i don't think that he because of that and because he's not feeling as if he is at the level of an MJF when he was a champion or when John Moxley was champion or even when Adam Page was champion, let alone a CM Punk, because he's not at that level. The feud against Christian, you know, is actually a real big drag for some folks, but I think the match itself is going to be good. I'm sure Christian is going to have every goon in the world. He's going to have Nick Wayne. He's going to have Luchasaurus. He's going to have the embassy come out there to try to help him, to try to put some doubt in people's minds. But at the end of the day, unless they're completely out of their minds down there, Swerve Strickland comes out with the victory. Willow Nightingale, I'm sorry. I can't say that for you. Mercedes Monet is not losing her first match. It would be a big surprise if she didn't. If if Willow Nightingale gets the victory, especially if it's by a nice sequence leading up to like a small package victory for Willow and Mercedes then goes nuts and beats the living hell out of her where it sets up another match, you know, unless that's going to happen, 
I think Mercedes is just going ahead and getting the victory and beginning her title reign, and we'll see what happens with who her first opponent is, and we'll see what happens with Willow Nightingale and Chris Statlander and Stokely Hathaway, because I still feel as if there's going to be some drama that increases between those three. AEW International title match, Roderick Strong against Will Ospreay. I hate to say this, because it's a pay-per-view and they don't do a lot of DQs. I would do a DQ here. Will Ospreay doesn't need the international title unless he's going to win the international title, hold it up until the time All In is in London, and he wins the AEW world title and then like combines them. Other than that, he doesn't need the belt. It's a mid-card belt. It's been perceived as a mid-card belt. I guess if you gave it to him, it might have some shine. But Okada has got the... Uh, the the other one, the Continental Crown. It's not like that thing is special. It's just a piece of a hunk of metal hanging over his shoulder. And even if he has great matches with it, it's just, it's another title. It's not at the level of the IWGP title, certainly not at the level of the AEW world title. So I think you get out of this match with Roderick Strong getting the victory, with Will Ospreay getting the ultimate you know, revenge at the end, and he's the one that's standing tall, but he's doing so without the title. He does not need that title wrapped around his neck. I'm sorry, he just doesn't. AEW World Women's Title Match, Tony Storm against Serena Deeb. Tony Storm. TNT Barbed Wire Steel Cage Match. Kids, watch, uh, go back in time, look up around this time in 1986, May 1986, the UWF just changed over from Mid-South. The Sheep Herders. And Jack Victory against Terry Taylor and the Fantastics. I was like 10 years old. This is showing on a Saturday. It was the most savage thing I thought I had ever seen in my entire life. Up until that point, it was wild. But they're doing it again. Going to be buckets of blood. They don't have to be poured down from the ceiling. Those guys are going to be blading it up all over the place. It's going to be wild. And I have a feeling that Mal Malachi Black is going to come out the victor there and then suck Edge even further and further back into his darkness. Get to those other matches when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Welcome back to the show. Mike Semper VB here with you. Wrestling Observer Live. Almost done with this one. Thank God. Almost done with the predictions for AEW Double or Nothing on Sunday as well. Made it up to the IWGP World Heavyweight Title Eliminator match. John Moxley against Konosuke Takeshita. This match is going to drive a lot of Japanese wrestling fans crazy. There's a lot of people that swear up and down and around again that John Moxley will not be beaten, cannot be beaten, does not want to be beaten, does not want to be put in the position to be beaten. So in that case, why the hell else are you doing this match? We didn't need this match on this show between these guys. John Moxley's been winning. Takeshita could use a win. Again, it's keeping him up at a certain level. It's why you, you keep Samoa Joe in the mix with like workout things and just being around and being a general menace because you want him to continue to stay in the mix and keep him in the forefronts of people's minds. I would want that out of Takeshita unless Takeshita is going to beat Moxley here. What are you doing? What are you doing? Does anybody in Japan expect Evil to beat John Moxley coming up? doesn't ruin that match if you're New Japan, and if you think that, you're wrong, period. And I can't speak for everybody in Japan. I bet you I could speak for a lot of New Japan fans and House of Torture uh opponents here that don't think it's going to have any uh damn bit of difference to make on that match whatsoever so since you made the match to catch this go over ftw title three-way chris jericho against shibata and hook i mean what would the story be if jericho doesn't hold on to the title he'll slime his way into it somehow orange cassidy trent beretta i'll just be happy if this feud starts to wrap up we saw don Callis grab orange cassidy's foot uh, in the tag match and, and, and seemed to, to be a menace that way. I think he turns on Orange, does something to Orange in this match, and Trent Beretta goes with him. And then the trio's title match, Austin Gunn, Colton Gunn, and Jay White, they're going to lose those titles to the Death Triangle just because, eh, why not? That's what I'm going with. So there. I want to thank everybody out there for listening and watching me today. I want to thank producer John. I want to thank producer Daniel. As far as Lance, you go. 
I want to thank you, too, for trying to come on the show today. But better luck next time. And there's always a next time because we do this show every single day. Bye-bye.